This season on This Is My Story, we have brought you heartfelt and compelling testimonials showing just how God is transforming people's lives. On this episode, we highlight a few that stood out. I woke up normally, going to step on the ground, I fell and uh, I didn't understand why I thought I tripped but the strength from my legs downwards, so it was gone completely. I found myself in a, in, a, in a season in my life when I related to someone who was the complete opposite of the will of God in my life. Starting us off is the story of renowned singer and worship leader Edith Wairimo. We made the trip to Edith's native home in Gekambura, Kikuyu, and it is here that she reflects on a season of isolation that not only drew her closer to God, but also gave her new promise for the life ahead. I found myself in a, in a, in a season in my life when I related to someone who was the complete opposite of the will of God in my life and uh, as a result of you know being in, in in wrong companion I got bruised and hurt in a way that words couldn't tell it changed my life in uh, significantly and if it had not been for the Lord it would have taken me out and so I was in that very very dark season you know and um, when I came out of it, I first wrote a song called Nigoku um, Dereruka. It didn't go too far, but it's a song that, um, that I released after, immediately after that season because I was celebrating. Actually, that song is a celebratory song. It's just like, it's going to get brighter because it had gotten brighter for me, especially with the end of that season. Um, but after that, I went into a season where now I was thinking deeply about the things I had gone through. You know, at first it was celebration, like, ooh, ooh that season is over. But then after that, you always tend to go back to a place now where you're quiet, there's no more celebration, there's no more music, and you kind of think about how that wave could, could have taken you out. And that's where Morango came from. It came from my deep place. Within the same period, Edith rekindled relations with a longtime friend, and with it came a promise of marriage. But first, a proposal. Before she got the proposal, and before all these arrangements happening, she was, of course, I, a girly girl, and we would just talk girly stuff. And God, of course, God is the center of everything we do. And when she got proposed to, I remember I was so happy. I was really happy and we were looking forward. We even shared uh, the fundi who makes my clothes. I sent her to the same fundi and the preparations were going on well. I even met the, the person. We were going on so well. But I remember in the middle of all that preparation, there's a pastor who is very well known in the country who called her and said, Edith, you're about to go to a season that will promote you into another dimension. And she told me, and we were like, nah, of course it's marriage. So we were praising God, we were happy, and we came for all the processes until almost the very end. At the very end, 
The wedding was cancelled and Edith went through a period of isolation that threatened to dim her shine. I felt like I went through a, a season of grief because the loss of anything would take you through a season of grief. But then the good thing about going through that season when you're in a season of isolation is that God allows you to go through that without the interference of external environments. So basically I went through it all. Helen was persistent in the friendship despite efforts by Edith to shun her and became part of a critical support system in that period. She pushed me to the limit of opening up my life to her to those levels. I needed somebody to cry with. I needed somebody to um, to help me be angry. Sometimes you just require somebody to be angry for you. She would come to my house and we would spend nights sometimes <laughs> crying, you know. <laughs> so she she helped me cry. Yeah. And um and we'd pray. We'd pray, we'd cry. Um through our crying, through our anger and outburst, it helped us move forward. And and once we cried, we would release it. Now it's gone. We are angry. Today we are angry. And um, it it really it it helped us in the in the process of healing. As they went through this period of healing together, Edith started seeing things for what they truly were. We went through the whole story with her and there were so many red flags and I'd never seen them. I was blind to them, probably because I was cute. I'd wanted it to work. But while we were going through it with her, it was clear that what had happened though painful was God's best will. Because I remember in, at my lowest, I looked at my mom and I told her, Mom, I'm done. I think my assignment on earth is done. Mm. And I told her, Mom, I just told her those four words. I told her, I want to die. With such thoughts lingering in her mind, Edith had to come to a point of forgiveness. And this was not easy. Forgot to, um, you know, acknowledge that you've forgiven that person. You need, to, you need to go to the root. You cannot forgive from the branches or the leaves. You've got to go to the root of the issue and actually forgive people and pray for and pray for these people, you know. So I had to go also go through a, a season of forgiving people. But guess what? One of the people I had to forgive was me. I had to go back and I had to forgive myself for things I had done to hurt myself and for decisions that I had made that I had hurt. And I had to, now, during that period of healing was when I had to ask God, Lord, now heal me. Now I'm ready to be healed. Throughout that period, Helen had it rough as well, but through the Lord, she was able to find strength to be there for her friend. I had to just look my emotions, even whatever I'm going through. Because even me on my personal life, I was also not well off. I was going through a hard punch. But somehow God gave me the grace that when I'm in that house and when I'm with her, it was never about me. It was always about her with a reason and a purpose. And I believe God made it that, God made it so. Because she needed my full attention and she needed somebody to be in her shoe. A key indicator of what the Lord is doing in Edith's life came when that season of isolation ended and she did the song Nitasimama. When I did Nitasimama and when I sang it, I sang it prophetically. I think I'm one person who, being a minister that I am, even when I am sick to the point of death, nobody will know. I'm very confidential about my weaknesses and I'm very loud about my achievements because I prefer people knowing that God can do. And I like talking about my weaknesses when I've gone through them after I am done because I like them being a reflection of where God has taken me from. Nee. 
mesi mama kwa rehema na neema yake Not knowing where the song was birthed from and seeing how people accepted it and loved it, I could just see God through it. And also I saw her being affirmed by God that I told you I am with you. I will never leave you and not forsake you. As Edith continues in her quest to stand again, her friend Helen acknowledges that God is yet to do far greater and bigger things. There are aspects of my life which I wouldn't necessarily say I'm still standing. And um, especially with regard to um, being able to be associable again, um, relating to people especially to that place of now leading to um, marriage and, and that kind of thing. I think what I've gone through, I still now need, um, and that's why I've told you, I, I found wisdom in, in going through therapy because now I think it's that place of my heart where now that, that part of me needs to reconcile. And I think that one has, has a journey. I'm praying for her above everything else wisdom because there's no doubt there's a calling over her life and a big one, bigger than even maybe she can realize. So she needs wisdom, divine wisdom from God to walk this journey because maybe she'll get to a place that I cannot answer her question. She has outgrown me, which I would totally love. And as of now, I can clearly say she's not the baby I used to feel like I want to protect. She's a grown woman in her own right. We are living in a lost and broken world, constantly bombarded by messages of hate and atrocities. But with God, we can overcome. Find hope and restoration on the go through life-changing shows on the Family Media app. And then you will lose yourself and gain the world. And Jesus said, what good is it? Get to stream Family TV and Family Radio 316 straight from your phone. Catch up on a show you missed or create video streaming playlists by saving and watching videos from our huge variety of shows at your own convenience. Download the Family Media app, available for all Android and iOS users on the Google Play Store and Apple Store, respectively. Family Media, keeping Jesus on the airwaves. This next story is about resilience and the desire to keep pushing on no matter how tough the obstacles are. Former Kenya Defense Forces soldier Clinton Mulua reflects on battling depression, losing his ability to walk, and his path to restoration. Normally, the, the ideas are not, uh, uh, are not quite uh, something that you can easily forget, or even the ambushes that happen at the camps. You know, at times during the evenings, um, they could even blow the, the walls of the camp and fire the camp. So th those, those memories are not easy to forget. Charles is Clinton's friend for many years and has been a key part of his life since childhood. We had a chama with our, with our moms. How about to Lijua, to Lijuana and Clinton? By then, by that time, Clinton and the Shule family, to Lijuana Mamayaki. So, Ile Ile Arakatia could then bear, could visit Mamayaki.
After one year in Somalia, Clinton came back to Kenya and decided to pursue a course to help him go up the ranks in the military. I joined a course called Military Police. I did that for six months. Six months here at, uh, at, at Mbakasi. And uh, I, after six months, I was posted to DOD. I stayed there for a year. And uh, from there now, I was taken now back to Gilgil. The cause of me going back to Gilgil, uh, well, it was not on my favor. And that's where I can say my, my, my journey of depression started. Doing a course that I undertook of military police, I can say you do that at least to, to go up uh, uh, career-wise, to go up career-wise. So for me, being going there, it was somehow a demotion for me. And uh, it, was, it was not easy for me to handle. So I started even getting into so much alcohol so much uh, the stress and then depression kicked in and uh, I knew I was in uh, in depression when I could not feel safe handling a weapon yes because I remember at one time I I sat on my bed at the camp with a weapon on my side and I was thinking why, why, why should I? Why should I not just end this? Clinton and his partner had great plans at the time, but with his struggles mentally, it was not clear how they would move forward. We met at uh, Gilgil. We re we trained together, though I didn't know her during the training. We came to know each other where we were posted in Gilgil. Yeah, so we dated for. Since 20, late 2017 until 2020, when we had our first child. Yes, and uh, also, you know, the part of us uh, being both in the military, uh, it's, it's, it's quite a challenge because there's nobody at home most of the time. So we had plans for one of us to one day find another career outside and quit quit the military at least you know even in the military we have we have we have uh, pillars of training and i know pillar number 5 says that there is resettlement after job after work you have to resettle yeah so this was not the way that i planned to quit the military this was for me, it was too, it came fast. It came in uh, unexpected, yes. And um, my wife was okay with it at the moment. Until now, I could no longer maybe provide. I could no longer pay house rent and all that. That's when now things started getting tough. And I, I started even breaking things at home, the glasses and all that. To make matters worse, Clinton would one day wake up having lost his ability to walk. Uh, it was an evening. I tried to go and get a meal for the night. So while walking down the stairs, I couldn't feel my legs anymore. I couldn't feel the strength that you feel as a normal person. But I went and got a meal. Now coming back and uh, going upstairs, I got exhausted on the way. But I pushed myself to the house. And when I reached at the house, I was so exhausted that I didn't even cook my meal. So I, I slept. Now the following morning, I I woke up normally, going to step on the ground. I fell, 
and uh, I didn't understand why I thought I tripped but the strength from my legs downwards it was gone completely so I actually I was waking up to go to the loo but I couldn't reach at the loo yeah so the loo had to happen on the floor <laughs> yeah but uh, that's when I now called my wife and told her I, I cannot walk Clinton's wife left work and came home. She helped him to hospital, but it was not easy considering Clinton had not been reporting to work. I was worried, wow, now how, how, how do I get treated? What, what kind of problem is this? So that's the moment when uh, I told her now, because I can still be treated at work. Even though I've not been, I've been absent. She was so scared. How do we now go back and tell them what we've been through and what has happened to you? I told her, let's go. I remember I even left my job idea at the camp, so there's no way I could access the camp. But I went and uh, proved that I, I, I was on the outside and all that, so I can say God, luckily I was admitted. And that's when, uh, on my admission, I was, I was diagnosed with a condition called GBS. Guillain-Barre syndrome is a very rare and serious condition that affects the nerves. It mainly affects the feet, hands and limbs. For Clinton, knowing this came with more devastating revelations. The moment now then I knew now I cannot walk again. My depression is still going up. So I was again diagnosed with major depression disorder, post-traumatic disorder that is PTSD and anxiety disorder. Yes. I was put under medication, under counseling. And uh, I can say they even tried to, to get hold of my family because at the moment now my wife too had, uh, had her own challenges, I can say. This was too much for her probably. So uh, now at the hospital I started improving. My legs started improving and uh, under medication of depression too. I can say through the therapies, I started getting well. Even though Clinton was making good progress, this was short-lived as he still had a case to answer for deserting the Kenya Defense Forces. Even after the doctor's recommendation, I was put in cell. And all this now crushed everything, every improvement of my my recovery. I tried pleading with them. I, I tried to I even I remember I even talked to to a religious leader to try to talk to my commander, but It was all in vain. Caroline Mbidi shares her path to recovery after a gripping alcohol addiction that stemmed from her career as a video vixen close to four years ago. anything. Unakunywa at stress utamuka reality kwanza ukupiga saa sita saa nane usiku ndio zushuka sasa alafu ukose hiyo pombe kichwa inaonga depression nika una cheese sasa unaona chatu kwanza nitafute kapombe hakuna kitu na solve bila hiyo pesa ya pombe utakunywa wapi
Caroline started getting creative at home and even at the local joints so as to get a taste of alcohol. Different. Her addiction to alcohol got worse as she now had to drink on a daily basis just to function. Hey bambi, hatu ukienda kazi usemu umetwa lo kutashini, mteito kasa ngapi. Do you know na joku na time, mbado nilikuwa, hapo ata 2020 ni kitu waka shoot is up, upcoming. Naenda, huyo mtu anayenda kunitumia pesa kwa mpesa na mwambia, pana, usi nitumia kwa namba angu, eka kwa till. Niyo till ya loko limishika hapa. Nikienda na thou sita kwa loko lunadani, yyo ni pombe wiki mzima. Sitoki, hata nilikuwa na ituwa shoot zingine na kata. Nasema, um, niko busy, wa, niko local, chivu, puna chakula hapo na... Siendi, hata kuoge inakuwa ba, eh, inakuwa bala. <laughs> Nanza kunuka, bata uwezi sikia, hata mwezi jisikia. As all this was happening, Caroline got close with a young man and in no time found out she was pregnant. Kapendana, kashika mimba, na hata sikujua niko na mimba. <laughs> sikujua. Nikipeleka beshti yangu mwingine kayolewan kwenda kupima. Ai ndo ngasema hata mimi wanataka ID sina ID nikaingia nikafinyo finyo. But nilikuwa nimenisi mashiruba na sasa ah, mani ulevi ama nini? Chichi ai kambo msichana kuna mimba ya miezi sita na nusu. Mimi hata ningezani kidhani hata kitu tumbo na uma. Unaona kwanza hapo ndo wenyewe unaona wenyewe ni mtu wako unaonyesha ngoka kale ka kitu. No, 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 Aya, sasa sindo nenda kwa uchu na nuna tunguo, tunguo, tunguo. Afutanga temi ya kuza. Nikaenda, nikamba mtu ya likuwa mepupu kwa tumbu. Kwa watu wanyo wanajua hizo mambo wanelema. Kwanzi hapo, wee, niko private, wananiambia nilande. Sana shindo, nalala, sina mtoto. Ushe isikia kitu tu, nika unachanga nikio. Depression is real. Kuchizi is real, is real. Eee, nilipitia. Kwanzi hapo sana ni nga, ma white pal, nga, 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 white pal, white pal, white pal. Nilikuwa na kunyo hata kota nane, wa mama walikuwa na kuja hapa kutukuji ya machupa. Saa hiyo likuwa ka mtuke kama kasoso. Eee, likuwa na kaka kasoso. Nikuwa nasikia vibaya yenyewe, mustiana, si kijana, mustiana, akiwa karefi ya subuhi. Nikitoka tu ija kufagia, pale tu ya subuhi six. Naona kamutu kana kuja hivi. Na ni mustiana kana kuja hivi. Sasa na sito ni upiga tu ama nifanya nini. Through alcohol detoxification, Caroline was set on her path to recovery. And after some time, the change was evident. Mana ni with the draw subo. Na usiku. Na usha pombe. 
na usha pombe kwa kichwa kwa mwili sasa siku ya kwanza hiyo ku the draw iwe hiyo pombe kulala 20 kumaliza 24 hours nikiwa soba hadi nikapostingi yenyewe Mungu Mungu anaweza eh kuka soba si rais you can catch the full versions of all these stories and more on our YouTube channel Family Media or get on the go front seat access on the Family Media app available on the Google Play Store and Apple App Store.